Uh, my name is Bill Majora, and I think my mother caught a king snake for me about 1948 or 49. And I was a little boy, and ever since then I've liked snakes. Uh, my name is Alexandra Reed, and I've been working with reptiles for probably 14 years. My name is Debbie Rexell, and I've been interested in reptiles for over 50 years. My name is Kyla Searcy, and I've been in the reptile hobby for three or four years. Um, if you could describe your experience with reptiles in two or three words, what would you choose? My experience? Mm -hmm. Um, a few words. Enchanting, fun, uh, challenging. Mostly very nice. Thanks. Truly incredible. People's views on reptiles in the past 80 years has drastically changed. In the 1930s, having a snake as a pet was an unheard of practice, considered only proper for zoos. One woman in particular changed the common opinions of snakes across the USA. Her name was Grace Olive Wiley. Grace Olive Wiley took a stand against the negative views of reptiles by exposing people to her reptiles through the media. She was featured in many types of media ranging from daily headlines to the film industry and allowed people to discover from hands-on experience the true nature of reptiles. Grace was born in 1883 in Kansas, Chinook, during a time when women had very little rights. She was given a good education in her early years and eventually left to attend the University of Kansas to pursue a bachelor's degree in entomology, the study of insects. She became one of the first women in America to graduate from college. She continued to work at the college, and in her 30s, she was appointed a professor. During Grace's studies as an entomologist, she collected bugs from various states to supply her experiments at the university. She also made multiple discoveries that contributed to the scientific field of entomology, such as her publication Life History Notes of Two Species of Salatid, Hemptera, found in Kansas, which was released in 1922 to the Kansas University Science Bulletin. Her large achievements as a scientist gained her respect and led to her recognition by her superior, H.B. Hungerford, in his publication, The Life History Notes of a Toad Bug. The live insects supplied by Miss Wiley from her home in Chanute thus made possible the notes he reported, and I wish to acknowledge my gratitude for her kindness. While making contributions to the field of entomology, Grace found a passion for herpetology, the study of reptiles. She began to collect a vast amount of reptiles as a hobby. In 1927, Wiley took a job at the Minneapolis Public Library's History Museum as a curator for the reptiles in the zoo. After being hired, she donated her collection, which now contained 330 individual reptiles and 115 different species. The news of a woman becoming a zookeeper was highly unusual at the time, and a new collection of reptiles in a zoo set his press among the press which granted Grace a small amount of fame as a herpetologist. When at the zoo, Grace held all her animals very fondly, regardless of whether or not they were venomous. She comfortably handled a snake whose bite could be fatal, just like you would hold a common household pet. She believed that any snake could be tamed, to be gentle or kind, and that venom should not condemn a snake to be treating, treated like an evil creature. Somehow they know very, very soon that I am friendly and like them. They appear to listen intently when I stand quietly at their open door and talk to them in a low, soothing voice. In some unknown manner, my idea of sympathy is conveyed to them. Um, a, big, a big thing about people who are fearful of snakes think that, oh, it's a, it's, it's, it's cursed or uh, I'm going to be cursed by touching the snake, but I think it's... I think it's rather an irrational fear because it's all in your head and when the majority of snakes are not going to hurt you or they're not going to they're not even going to hiss at you they're just like they're just like little noodles who want Wiley's actions caused controversy in the staff of the zoo. They didn't want her to handle venomous snakes and repeatedly asked her to stop, threatening to fire her if her tendencies did not change. 
Grace took a stand and left the zoo. She did not believe that the staff at the zoo should be able to decide how she handles her reptile. Shortly after, Grace moved her collection to the Brookfield Zoo, where she was given a job. The Brookfield Zoo had no problem with how she handled her snakes, until she accidentally let 19 snakes out of their cage and failed to report it. Among those snakes was her Egyptian cobra, Bandy Bandy. Bandy Bandy's bite could be easily have been fatal. This fact caused the zoo to fire Grace Wiley in 1935, after she had worked there for two years. I do not feel I was guilty of carelessness. I just forgot, simply forgot, to close the door on the cobra's cage after I cleaned it. I couldn't do everything at once. All the other snakes that got away were harmless, except Bandy Bandy, and I'm sure he went down the drain pipe. The cobra, she added, just found the coziest place he could in the whole reptile house. If most persons were half as nice as snakes, this world would be a better place. The press followed these events closely, producing headlines like Bandy Bandy Found Alive and 19 Snakes Got Away, Grace Wally Fired as Snakes Escape to appear in newspapers, all of which contributed to Grace's fame. After losing her job, Wiley took her reptile collection with her to Cypress, California, where she started her own roadside zoo that she named Grace Wiley Reptiles. Her snakes in the zoo, including the venomous ones, such as king cobras and rattlesnakes, were allowed to be held by anyone who asked, including small children, all of which was granted for a small fee. When first taken captive, most wild creatures are quite terrified and panicky. This was true of the rattlesnake that bit me, and yet on my return from the hospital, this same nervous fellow was tamed without any trouble. It was done in two weeks, with only one hand. When running her zoo, Wiley made multiple appearances in the media, making headlines regularly and helping in different films as a snake wrangler. She even appeared in some of the century's classics such as Tarzan, The Jungle Book, Trade Wind, and Cobra Woman. Her popularity among the media was the cause of photographer Daniel P. Mannix's visit. During the shoot, Grace chose to take pictures with an Egyptian cobra she had not yet tamed. The flash from the camera spooked the snake, causing it to bite Grace. We went over to Grace. She was standing, holding her finger, trying to squeeze the venom out. She was perfectly calm and immediately took command. Jewel, will you please call Wesley Dickinson? He's a herpetologist and a friend of mine. He'll know what to do. She gave me his phone number. Then, she suddenly turned to Dan. He really didn't bite me, did he? She asked pleadingly. It was the only emotion we saw her show. During the chaos, the anti-venom Grace had was broken, and none of the hospitals had the equipment to save Grace. She died... July 20th, 1948, at the age of 64. Grace Wiley was a remarkable herpetologist who changed the negative views of snakes by the public. Wiley took a stand against the negative stereotypes of reptiles in her time. Wiley was not afraid to do what none had done before, making her an important part of the history of herpetology. Her personality and dangerous hobby intrigued the press making her constantly featured in articles and films. She gave people a chance to understand and learn to love reptiles. Reptiles are now pets that are loved as dearly as a cat or a dog. Wiley helped people gain access to experiences with reptiles and was the start of a revolution to change people's opinions about them. I enjoy seeing young people interested in them, especially girls. I strongly believe that with education, uh, people will be less fearful of snakes. The fear of snakes is cultivated. We are not born with it. Children love snakes as naturally as they love cats or dogs. You don't be afraid of the reptile's tongue. The only animal that can hurt you with its tongue is the human being. Grace Olive Wiley